welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I wanted to share with you my top five favorite money books for beginners. I thought sharing these books might be helpful to some of you if you're in the beginning stages of maybe your own financial journey or you're just learning to get some information and trying to figure out where to start. If that's you, then stay tuned. Hey guys, my name is Kristen. Welcome back to my channel. I make videos mostly about personal finance, saving money, paying off debt. So if you like that kind of content, I hope you'll subscribe and stick around. Now, of course, I don't really know where you might be in your financial journey. My husband and I are currently working to save three to six months of living expenses for us to stash in the bank for an emergency fund. And then we are going to move on to really focusing on saving for our kids' college, focusing more on retirement, and maybe even been saving up a down payment for a house but rewind maybe two and a half years ago we didn't know where to start I've always been a huge reader my whole life my husband not so much but I am a reader a planner a researcher so naturally the first place I looked was to books now there are so 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 many books out there about money personal finance, investing, credit repair, real estate. Obviously there's a whole bunch that are beginner level all the way up until expert level and really niched down into specific parts of finance. I think when you're just getting started, maybe you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe you know you need to make some changes in your finances, but maybe you're not sure what those changes are exactly. I wanted to share a couple of books today that I think are just really great overall books, not just for anybody to read, but especially for somebody kind of looking to get started on a journey to fixing their finances. Maybe you just don't know how to save money on a lower income. Maybe you have a huge mountain of debt and you're not exactly sure how to get started paying that off. The books I wanna share with you today, I found to be really great assets and extremely informational, extremely easy to digest. And I'll leave the links for all of them down below where you can check them out. I am not only a lover of books, but an extreme lover of audiobooks. You know, we're so busy now and the one thing that we have is always our phones with us and I really like to try and listen to an audiobook I listen to at least one a month sometimes more and I think it's a great way to fit some extra learning into the margins of your day so what I like to do especially if I'm driving you're you will rarely catch me with the radio on unless my kids are in the car I'm always listening to an audiobook or a podcast somehow taking advantage of that extra downtime really focus on learning something new or enhancing my life in some way so I'm gonna leave a link down below you can get a free audible trial I believe when you sign up you actually get two audiobooks for free and I also want to mention that there's an app called hoopla and I'll leave a link to that down below as well it basically syncs up with your local library so you do need a library card to use it but it's free and they have a ton 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 of free books and free audiobooks that you can get on hoopla as well so let's get into my favorite books. Book number one is The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Clayson. And please forgive me if I get these names wrong. I think the reason this book stood out to me so much was it was very, very basic. The other thing is it read very much like a story instead of a normal factual personal finance book. It's set back in, I don't know, ancient times, biblical times, I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I read this. But it's set back a long time ago and the main point of this book is really just how to handle money. So it's a very basic method of figuring out how much of your money you're going to save and how much you're going to spend. And I think it's a great one to start with because it really lays the foundation of how important it is to save money and pay yourself first. And I think, especially as we are working to pay off debt, paying yourself first and really kind of taking off the top is something that gets lost because it's not included when you're following a specific debt payoff plan, maybe like the debt snowball or the debt avalanche. Um, and we didn't save money while we were paying off debt either, but everybody's different. So I think this is a great book to read before you get started on any kind of financial plan or debt payment plan. And it's really just going to give you a very sound awareness of how important it is to save money and always make sure that you are saving for yourself 
and making sure that you're good first before you're worrying about everything else. Book number two is called Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I actually read this book before we started our debt-free financial journey and I also had the privilege of seeing uh, Robert Kiyosaki speak live. He's very entertaining, he's very charming, he's very cocky and it was really fun to watch him speak. So if you're a big Dave Ramsey fan or Susie Orman fan you're going to find this book drastically different. In Rich Dad Poor Dad he tells the story of his two dads and what he means by that is basically he talks about his his actual father who he calls his poor dad and then his best friend's father who he calls his rich dad and throughout the book he's outlining all the different lessons that he learned about money and how to make money and how to handle money from each of these two dads and it's so interesting. I think one of the things that I really took from this book at the time was and I might be mincing words here because like I said, it's been a long time since I read this, but what I really took out of it was he, instead of preaching to live below your means and live below your means and cut your expenses, I think he talks more in this book about how to increase your means. Instead of living below your means, how to increase your means, how to uh, make money work for you instead of you always working for your money. In some of his other books, he also talks a lot about how to create passive income streams and how to basically make money while you're sleeping. And I think if you're really into personal finance and you're really into money and learning different perspectives and seeing things from different points of view, I think you should absolutely check this book out and I think you'll find it very interesting at the least. Book number three is The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas J. Stanley. This book was very, very eye-opening. This book is all about a study that was done, I believe it was published in 1996, and like the title suggests, it's about your everyday millionaire that could even be living next door, but you don't even realize that they're millionaires because of the way they're living. I think the general point of the whole book is that anybody can become a millionaire if you do the right things with money throughout your life, that you don't have to earn a million dollars. You don't have to be super rich. So I think the basic point of this book is that there are so many millionaires in our communities, but you don't really know because most of your everyday millionaires are not flashy like what we see on TV. You know, that's the sensationalized millionaire in society. But so many of our millionaires live next door in a small house. They drive a used car. They're not flashy. They're saving money, they're living frugally, and you don't even know it, but the way they manage their money and living in that manner is what allows them to be millionaires. So this book is so interesting, and I think it also gives the average person making an average salary a lot of hope that we too could become millionaires if we just live in a certain way. Definitely check that one out. It's a little bit more factual um, with some more statistics from their study to back it up, but it's super interesting. Book number four is I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. This book was one I randomly found on Amazon a couple years ago, and while it didn't necessarily give me any new earth-shattering information that I hadn't already heard somewhere else, I think it's written in a completely different way from most finance books out there, and I think that's what made him be so successful. He's also a successful blogger, but he has a much more conversational tone, and I think it's a great book, especially for some of the younger people. Also, if you are really struggling um, with credit cards, you don't know what credit card to have, or whether you should have credit cards, or how to establish credit, or maybe you have a lot of bill collectors, or maybe you wanna try and lower your credit card rates. He gives you a lot of that information, but with very actionable steps, like literally step-by-step, -step, word for word scripts that you can read out of the book while you're calling your credit card company. And I absolutely suggest if you have any of those issues or concerns that you grab this book and you read through it, highlight, take notes, and I think you'll find it almost more of a manual than an actual personal finance book. Book number five is The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. If you've been on my channel before, then you know I couldn't have a list without including Uncle Dave. We went to Financial Peace University, which if you don't know, is Dave Ramsey's financial program that is taught in churches and other institutions across the country. We did this two and a half years ago. I'll link a video up here which talks all about Dave's plan that we were following for a while. So if you haven't heard of Dave Ramsey, he's a big money guru. He has a podcast, a YouTube channel, um, a whole bunch of books, and, and he's very polarizing. Some people love him, some people love to hate him. 
Um, we really like Dave. He has a very no-nonsense, non-excuses approach, and that type of teaching really resonates with me. I think that's why I like his books and his teaching so much. This book, I think, is a great replacement for Financial Peace University. Now, he has another book, and I believe it's called... I think it's just called financial peace or something like that. I'll link that one down below as well. You can check it out because it does not come with the kits anymore. Financial peace has moved to an all online model. So when you sign up for the course, you only get one hardback workbook to use throughout the course and everything else is online. If you don't want to sit down and take a nine week class, as much as I think there's a huge benefit to doing Financial Peace University in that setting, I absolutely think that the Total Money Makeover is a close second. If you get this book and you read through it and you really put it into practice and you're sure that you're committed and you are following his teachings, you absolutely can be successful. Now, of course, Dave's way isn't the only way. We've talked about that a lot on this channel. Personal finance is personal, yada, yada, yada. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do things to kind of reach the same end result. But I think this is a great book to read, even if you don't want to follow Dave's specific plan. I think he does a really good job of getting people to get out of their own way. He does a great job of getting people to see how your actions have brought you to the place that you are, but also how your actions can lead you away from that place and to a better place. So even if you don't like him or his approach, I highly, highly recommend reading The Total Money Makeover. I absolutely think that there's something to be gotten out of it for every person and every personality type. Those are all of my five books, but I wanted to leave you with a quick bonus book. This is also from Dave Ramsey in conjunction with his daughter, Rachel Cruz. This book is called Smart Money, Smart Kids. And the reason I wanted to put this on the list as well is because, again, even if you don't really like Dave Ramsey, this book I feel is such a great book tailored to parents who are trying to find their way with their children and teach their children young about money and really change their family tree, which is something that Dave Ramsey says a lot in his teachings. But Basically, he wants to help you break the cycle. So helping you teach your children and raising your children in a way that's going to steer them away from debt and help steer them away from all of the mistakes that you and I may have made in our past. It talks a lot in detail about how to teach your kids about money, about them getting jobs, about them getting their first car, saving for college, helping them invest, and a whole bunch of extra information that I think is just really beneficial. I also think it would be a great tool to give to a teenager. If you have an older teen that may be close to driving age or working age or college age, I suggest maybe they read the book as well. I know I'm gonna have both my kids read it when they get a little bit older, and I think maybe it'll help them understand why we are making some of the decisions we're making with them and their finances. Those are all the books I wanted to share with you today. It's been such a long time since I've read all these and I think I'm going to make it my goal to try and reread every single one of these books this year. Like I mentioned, check out the links down below for the free Audible trial and also for the free Hoopla app where you can listen to audiobooks and read regular books for free as well. Thank you so much for watching today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Have you read any of these books? Do you have any different books to add to the list? I'd love if you share them. That way everybody can benefit from your suggestions. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.